He is risen. We are in the Easter season until Pentecost. So for the next several weeks, we will still be celebrating Easter. Um, I want to thank you uh, to everyone who helped with the, uh, the brunch um, that we had, drive through brunch, a couple weeks ago on Palm Sunday. Uh, for all that hard work, uh, we made about uh, $1,600. So thank you for everybody that purchased a delicious um, casserole that morning and contributed um, to our uh, savings here at the church. Uh, and thank you to all who helped for uh, Easter morning as well last Sunday. It was a glorious day. The weather was warm. The grass is green. The trees are starting to bud, and it's starting to look like spring. So thank you to everyone who helped on Easter as well. Um, I want to welcome all of the family and friends of uh, Daniel and Ava um, this morning who have joined us uh, to hear them give their faith papers. I hope the two of you slept last night. Um, they, I, I'm so excited for you to hear what they have to say. They have worked very hard these past two years, and their faith papers are astounding. And I think you will be very moved by uh, the words that they have to, to share with you and how much they've learned in the last two years, especially uh, via Zoom. Uh, one of my favorite Zoom classes with them was when they started changing their filters and came as cows and dogs and sharks and kind of fun things like that. So um, that's, that's one of my joys of working with young people. Um, I'm very sorry to hear that uh, Harold Bloom, Charlie Bloom, passed on Friday. I was able to take communion to him on Thursday. And his visitation will be Tuesday at the Bokey Funeral Home uh, from 5 to 7. And the service will be Wednesday here at the church at 2 o'clock. Um, please keep Irma and her children and their entire families in your prayers during these difficult days. And then also uh, last night, um, Clint Miller's grandfather, uh, Carl Drefke, uh, passed. And I, at this point in time, I don't know anything about the services over at the, the Lutheran Church. So please keep um, their entire family in your prayers as well. Um, just, a, just a couple of things about the service this morning, other than the, the young people giving their faith papers. Uh, Jake Balvance uh, will be reading scripture this morning along with Katie Dolan. Um, so we thank them for, uh, for helping with reading scripture. And this morning we'll be talking a lot about wisdom. And wisdom throughout history, even before Christ was born and into, the, uh, into Christ's birth and death and resurrection and into the Christian church, the word wisdom is also synonymous with the Holy Spirit. And the name for that, the Greek name for that is Sophia, wisdom. And wisdom, Sophia, the Holy Spirit has always been known as the feminine. So when you hear words like her and she, this is all talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So let us start our worship with prayer this morning. Let us pray. O oh God of hosts, from the rising to the setting of the sun, your name is greatly to be praised. We gather to glorify your name and to rededicate ourselves to the covenant between us. Ours is a covenant you have inscribed in life and peace. It is written on the tablets of our hearts. Shine there your light. Reveal to us your word, and we will not stumble. Bless our worship this morning, Lord. May it be pleasing unto you and to all the heavenly hosts. In Jesus' name, amen. Wisdom holds us in her heart. She is the teacher above all of earth's teachers. Yet, she calls us as partners in the gospel of Christ. O oh, daughters and sons, turn your faces to wisdom. Amen.
is hard to step out of the shadows of these times, to try to embrace the light which is being cast upon us. We've spent so much time searching, hoping, longing for things to change. And in that longing, the hoping, the searching, we forgot so many people. We ignored so much pain. We turned away from grief and loss, afraid that it would embrace us. Yet, Yet on this day, we are reminded that we are still Easter people. We will be Easter people again, and we are Easter people now. Let us speak of pandemic fears which have tried to wipe away resurrection hope as we pray our prayer of confession together. Wise and all-knowing God, we confess our knowledge is limited. We don't know what's best. We don't know how to control ourselves. We don't know how to forgive. We don't know how to love. And we don't know how to faithfully follow you when there is a cost. Forgive our pride and our foolishness. Restore and redeem us. Give us a thirst for your spirit's Sophia wisdom and all that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, this is the day of resurrection and new life. This is the day that God offers a steadfast hope and love which will never end. Let us sing and dance on this day. We are still, we will be again. We are always an Easter people. We will rejoice and give thanks to God who saves us. No, if you have asked in your heart and have truly meant it, then God has heard your plea, and God will answer your prayers and has forgiven you. Brothers and sisters, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Will you join me? children to stand up and if you're really short you can stand on the pew I'll give you permission and wave to everybody everybody wave back to them and everybody kind of wave to your neighbor too and greet them as well they're waving guys turn around and look up in the balcony they're waving up to you up there too see they hadn't forgotten you and don't you forget them either and Ava and Daniel you just have to do this a couple more weeks May, May, May 2nd is coming I'll tell you. So um, this morning I have a very, very important question for you, and I invite all of you to um, answer the question, even if you're not with a child. And if you're by yourself, you can certainly text someone and, and have that conversation with them as well. So um, I, I want you to think really, really hard about the qu answer that you're going to give to the people you're sitting with. And I'm going to ask you. Uh, quite a few of your answers, so I want you to listen carefully. Are you ready? Yeah? Are you ready? Okay. How do you know that you're alive? How do you know that you're alive? And say something else besides breathing. Clint, how do you know you're alive? 
You're moving. All right. <laughs> Amen to that. Where's Jake? Jake, how do you know you're alive? Reading. You're reading? Breathing. Oh, you're breathing? Yes. Daniel? You have emotions. Anybody else? I have a kind of a hard time seeing through this plexiglass. May, I see May. And I need to be like Miss Lois. Was she Romper Room Lady? She was, that was the name of Romper Room. Maybe that was just a St. Louis show. She looked through a, a, a glass. May, how do you know? Uh, my heart's beating. What's that? Your heart's beating? How about you, Ava? You're sitting here, you feel the bench? Good job. Um, we can feel happy and sad, right? And we can feel cold and warm. We can touch and see and we can hear and think. We can remember things. That's starting to fade with me a little bit. Um, I can smell. I can walk and run. And there's lots of ways to tell you that you are alive. But how can you tell if someone else is alive? Share that with the person that you're with. Now, there was a man who had a problem with all of this. His name was Thomas. Thomas knew that he was alive, but he had trouble believing that Jesus was alive. He decided that he, the way that he would know that Jesus was alive, the only way that he would know that is was by touching him. So when Jesus came into the room, Thomas looked at him and still couldn't believe his eyes. Seeing Jesus after he had been crucified was with his eyes wasn't enough for Thomas. He wanted to touch Jesus. Jesus told him, stop your doubting and believe. Then when Thomas heard Jesus say that, somehow he knew it was Jesus. So Jesus gives us new life in heaven with him when it's time for us to die. But I got another question for you. What would Thomas, what if Thomas was blind? You see, Thomas, touching Jesus would have been a way for Thomas to tell if Jesus was there. So now I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to touch somebody that's with your family that is sitting next to you. So close your eyes and touch someone with your family. Keep your eyes closed. Now I want you to find the person's hand next to you. And I want you to hold on to that hand. Now squeeze their hand, not too hard. It feels good to touch someone or hold their hand or hug someone. Maybe that's what Thomas was trying to tell Jesus. You can open your eyes. You see, maybe Thomas needed a hug. When you have trouble believing that Jesus is really alive, try holding someone's hand or hugging someone. It makes it a whole lot easier to stop your doubting and believe. Will you repeat after me as we say our prayers? Dear God, thank you for sacrificing your life for us. Thank you for rising and coming back alive. Thank you for the promise that when we die, we have new life with you. Bless our family and friends, our church and our community, and the entire world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Let's continue our worship with prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, Alpha and Omega, who in Jesus Christ turns the world upside down, who makes folly of the world's wisdom and wisdom of the world's folly, who mocks the strength of the strong and crowns the weakness of the humble. You are our sovereign and savior, and we adore you. We thank you, O oh Lord, for Easter, 
for the way it kindles our awareness of who Jesus was and what he was about, of who you are and what you are about, of who we are and what we are about. In Jesus, your character and our destiny were joined. And you promised that his work would not end with his death. Send us into the world as you sent Christ into the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, lover of your children, the tomb has been opened and we dance into your future. Your life has dawned on us and we surround you with our praise. You reach out your hand and lead us into joy. Jesus Christ, faithful witness, you pick open the locked doors of our hearts and come in to be with us forever. You breathe peace into our souls so we may bring healing to a troubled world. Holy Spirit, breath of peace, you show us our hearts so we may give love to others. You show us your hands, sending us to serve the needy. You show us your hope so we may live in your joy. God and community, holy and one, who is, who was, and who is to come. Hear our prayer this morning. And now, in the silence of this safe sanctuary, Lord, we lift our silent prayers of joy and trouble. I want to thank you for continuing to support this church and the ministries that we do here. And so I'm going to invite um, Katie and Jake and Ava and Daniel to go ahead and come forward, and I invite the ushers to uh, collect our offering. Let us dedicate these gifts together. If we want to know you, generous God, we must see you in those all around us. If we want to serve you, we must give up that which is most important to us, even our material resources, so that blessings of hope and life might be offered to the needy, the lonely, and the hungry all around us. Receive our gifts, we pray, so that others might be transformed, even as we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I'll be reading from Proverbs 4, 5 through 9. 
Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or swerve from wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Esteem her, and she will exalt you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will set a garland of grace on your head and present you with a crown of splendor. Today we'll be reading the Philippians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. This is Paul's prayer for the Philippians. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which has become a good work, and you will be formed it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it, even as it me, meant for me to think this of you, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both of, in my bonds, and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how gently I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And in this I pray that your love in, may abound you may more, and more in knowledge and in all judgment. They may approve things that are excellent. They may be sincere and without offense, offense till the day of, of the Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Good morning. Good morning. Traditions are wonderful, but there is so much more to faith than what we do on the holidays. Growing up in our church has shown me that our congregation has shown faith, especially this past year and how we've had to adapt to new ways of how we did church. In the Bible, the church has always been referenced as the people, not a place. We have a beautiful building, but during this past year, our faith has carried us through no matter where we were worshiping. We continued to be the church even when we weren't in the building. I want to share with you some of those traditions, both past and present, so that we might understand that we were always wor worshiping God. One of my favorite memories is Palm Sunday. One memory that will always stand out is Larry Heidman bringing George the donkey as a reminder of when Jesus rode into Bethlehem. Palm Sunday also makes me think of when the Sunday school kids would walk down the aisles in the church cheering Hosanna. This tradition makes me happy because it reminds me about the real story of Jesus coming into Bethlehem. During the pandemic, we did Palm Sunday a little differently from the past years. The church members picked up palm leaves outside the building, cars were decorated with sayings on the window, and Kurt Conway even had a donkey on the front of his car. We drove around spreading the word of God by yelling Hosanna and waving at people as we drove by. Even though 2020 wasn't the same as years before, we still rejoiced and gave thanks to God. Easter makes me think of when we had Easter egg hunts during Sunday school. That was a very exciting activity as a young kid. I also remember when we would gather in the back of the church and the kids would get noisemakers, rip, flowers, ribbons, bubbles, and balloons. We would worship, when worship started, we would then walk down the aisle and aisles waving and singing. I love Easter Sunday because we celebrate the day that Jesus rose again. As Mary Magdalene was quoted in chapter Luke 24, 6-7, He is not here, He is risen. In the year 2020, we still celebrated as we gathered safely in our homes and worshipped on our phones and computers by watching the cool worship service that Pastor Laura put together. Getting ready for the Christmas program was always very exciting and kind of scary when I was younger. When I would think back, I remember when we would sit in the pews and go over lines. I think my favorite time was when we would get to pick out our costumes. 
The past years, I have been an angel, a star, and I even got to be married. The Christmas pageants were always a fun time because we would get all, we would, we would get to all come into the sanctuary and work on our lines in different scenes of the program. After it was all done, the kids would be so proud and get a bag of goodies with an ornament. The pageant is something to remember because it was a good way of teaching us about the story of Jesus' birth. This past year's Christmas program was not celebrated in the traditional way, but in a creative way. Since we could not be in the church physically for it, Pastor Lord came up with the idea of creating a virtual Christmas program. Families in the church received scripts and they recorded them on their phone, and then Brannigan put it together to be played on Facebook on Christmas Eve. This was a good way of still having a Christmas pageant with everyone in a safe way. Christmas Eve has always been a touching service for me. This is because it is the evening where it is more calm and everyone is in anticipation of Jesus' birth. I remember picking up candles and finding a spot to sit. When I would look in front of the church, I would instantly see gorgeous trees with a lot of special ornaments. Scattered in the front would also be a lot of poinsettias. When I was younger, I remember getting up to sing in front of hundreds of people at the beginning of the Christmas Eve service. This was very nerve-wracking, but also very special to me. One of my favorite songs to hear on Christmas Eve is Silent Night. It is so pretty when we all light our candles and hold them up in the air. The last thing that has always been meaningful to me is the singing of O Holy Night. This song makes me think of how special that night was right before Jesus' birth, and it makes me think of Luke 2, 10-11. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Never would I have thought we would have been standing in the snow in the front lawn of church for this past year's Christmas Eve service. No candles, no Christmas trees, no poinsettias, but I still feel that warmth in my heart. It will always be a service I remember in my life. Traditions are wonderful, but the changes the pandemic caused has taught me that my faith and our faith will remain strong without doing what we've always done. We can still worship God even if it looks different. I am very thankful I have been raised in Zion, in Zion United Church of Christ. I have such great memories of my church family no matter where or how we worship. Good morning. Good morning. Let me start with a question. Do you remember getting your Bible in third grade, or in Pastor Laurel's case, first grade? I got my Bible on October 11, 2015. When I went up to this chancel area and stood in front of all of you, I was nervous. But now I know that you as my church family will support me on my way through Christ's teaching. Did you know in the last year there have been five billion Bibles sold worldwide? Five billion. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in his righteousness. God gave us this book of his knowledge to learn from the past to better prepare us for the future. Okay, so let's think of the Bible as an instruction manual for our lives. It certainly doesn't tell us how to fix a car. The Bible is our instruction manual on how to live our lives. In the New Testament, it teaches us about life of Jesus in the early church and how to worship, uh, worship God. When we have the Old Testament, we learn about God and God's chosen people, the Israelites. There are many lessons and instructions in the Old Testament, even the very first pages of how God created the heavens and the earth. And now Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, the kingdom of God, and how they gave it up because they gave into temptation and the bribery to eat from the one tree in the garden that God himself told them not to eat from. But they disobeyed and ate the fruit from that tree, and God sent them out of the garden. They got kicked out of the garden because of the temptation of eating the fruit from the one tree in the garden. The instructions in this story tell us to follow the rules, but when we don't follow the rules that God has made for us, we must be punished for not following them, but then receive forgiveness. In the book of the first Samuel, chapters 16 through 17, we get a story about a man named David and a giant named Goliath. 
David was no weak, but his friend King Saul, however, when David said he would fight the giant, Saul was worried, and David was not a, as David was not a warrior. But he put his own royal armor on David and gave him his blessing. David asked that the armor is removed, as he was not used to it. He chose instead to face the giant dressed as a simple shepherd boy, his slingshot as his only weapon. When you think about the story, God is saying that you can't judge a person by their appearance, but what is in their heart, because anyone can be brave no matter what they look like or how they act, because we are all children of God, and that is important because we can think of it as our Heavenly Father is the most powerful and strong in the world in space, but he is also kind and caring for each and every one of us. And we are different, but that is okay because we have God on our side and he is always there for us. There is a story after story in the Old Testament showing how God is guiding us through his word of how to think and live. The book of Proverbs tells us all of these things. In the New Testament, we hear story after story about Jesus and the early church. When Jesus was born, the ancient world knew nothing of this baby that was going to be king. But King Herod, who was the most powerful leader in that time place, wanted nothing to do with him. King Herod was, the, was wrong because God was there and he came to earth in the form of a baby, Emmanuel, meaning God is with his people through Jesus, his son, in part two of the Holy Trinity. Jesus has been born, as we learn about in the book of Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. In the book of John, we hear about one of the ways to get to heaven. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is saying that the only way to get to the kingdom is with him, with the truth, and with life. In the book of Matthew, chapter 8, we get a story about Jesus calming a storm. Jesus and his disciples were on a boat one night, and Jesus had fallen asleep after a long day of preaching to the people. And then all of a sudden, a harsh storm came, and the disciples were scared. So they thought waking Jesus was the best option. So they woke him up, and Jesus was like, You all have little faith, and why are you so afraid? So then Jesus performed a miracle. The storm became a calm and peaceful night. This just shows how anything can be done through faith in God. Jesus said to his disciples, because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. When you have faith on your side, anything is possible. You just have to believe in God, and you can do anything. You just have to believe. I was gathering information for my faith paper, and I found a quote that really speaks to me. It says, you can't love without God. When I think about this quote, the more God's love has expanded across the earth in just the small time it takes to snap my finger, God loves you more every second. All of these stories in the Bible happen again throughout history, and if we would just use the Bible as a way to live our lives, then we will end up with God and Jesus. But it, will, it is important that we learn from the past to prepare ourselves for that one moment when we don't know what to do with our lives. But when that moment comes, just think, what might the Bible say? And that will help us with our situations. God's inspired word was given to us for our own uses, for us to learn from, and that is what we must do, because the Bible is God's word that will help us through the present and the future. God teaches so many things in the Bible, like kindness and love, but most importantly, love and kindness to your enemies. Let me end with scripture from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 11. You will be enriched in every way to be generated in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. I will continue to read my Bible and learn about God and Jesus. I will continue to read my Bible when I have just that little time where you have some silence and you can hear yourself think. I will continue to learn the teaching of God, better prepare myself for my life down the road. And when I'm having a hard time or a bad day, I can look in the Bible for some comforting words from God. Will you continue reading your Bible? I hope so. Thank you for listening to my faith paper, and I hope you have a wonderful day. May Christ be with you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, your church is in good hands both now and in the future. Thank you guys so much. And you both survived, and I informed them that everybody here wants them to succeed, which they did greatly, beyond expectations, and that with this new plexiglass up, if any of you brought in rotten tomatoes, they were safe. So take a deep breath, Ava and Daniel. You did it, and you did it well. I'm so very, very proud of you, like everyone else here is as well. Thank you. Let's sing. Wisdom and the word of God is at work among you. Let it also work through you to the glory of God and joy of creation. We will go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.